Welcome back to Will and Mabel and today we've got another Q&A episode where I've got a question from one of you guys all about obnoxious, annoying puppy and dog barking. Now if we are just meeting, my name's Will, I'm a canine behaviourist and on this channel I make videos just like this one to help teach you guys how to be amazing canine leaders that raise perfect canine companions. So if you are new here, please consider subscribing. Now before we delve into this question, I want to quickly remind you guys that I have got my brand new boot camp course available on FenrirDogTraining.com and the link is down in the description box below. That bootcamp course is the protocol, the one month protocol that I utilize for the vast majority of the behavior cases that I use and I use it to restructure the relationship between a dog and its owner. That way the dog understands that it has a clear, consistent, calm leader to look to for direction and guidance in all circumstances. If you can establish that relationship with your dog, the rest is absolutely a piece of cake. And that one month bootcamp course is is the perfect, quickest, most efficient way to restructure that relationship while simultaneously working on a vast majority of behavioral difficulties, including obnoxious and annoying barking that we're gonna discuss today. So I had a question from one of you guys and you were talking about your Connie Corso puppy. Training's been going okay, there's been some problems coming up here and there, but nothing major. But the one thing that's driving you mad now they're going into about nine months of age is that they're barking non-stop at loads of different things and it's getting to the point where it's just really frustrating, really irritating and really annoying. Now dog barking, puppy barking, overreactive barking especially with guarding breeds and especially more breeds like German Shepherds is a very common problem that I have to help people with but do not worry there's loads of different options that I can help you guys with to really quite quickly and comfortably overcome this problem that like I say can cause mass amounts of frustration the first thing you need to do is kind of identify where the barking is coming from and there's kind of a few main reasons one of the main reasons that I face because I work so predominantly with guarding breeds is alert barking now alert barking is one of those things that you kind of have to question yourself if it's happening because why did you get a garden breed in the first place if you were then going to be really annoyed if someone's coming down your drive or there's someone around your house or when the postman comes to the door that your dog starts barking because that's kind of what it's there for it's meant to do it the problem arises that once they've alerted they've let you know that there's somebody there that they don't know whether they should be there or not and again they're just doing their job they don't stop and they continue the barking and the barking then becomes almost aggressive or obnoxious or irritating and you just kind of lose control. That then often escalates into door manners becoming a real problem, the dog being really obnoxious if you're trying to welcome guests into your home. That's a really common problem, especially with large, powerful garden breeds. Now, if that is the kind of problem barking that you're facing, there's kind of a two-stage procedure to fixing that. The first, like I mentioned when I was discussing my boot camp course, is that you need to restructure your relationship with your dog. Once you've achieved that structure and that guidance where the dog can understand, sorry, that they can look to you for guidance and that they don't need to take responsibility in situations like a potential threat at the door, you can then much easily, much easier, then be able to fix the problem. Now, if you try and fix the problem without restructuring that relationship, you'll often find it very difficult, especially with large, powerful guarding breeds, because if they detect a threat or something that might be a threat and they don't see you as their clear leader, they might then take that position and try and act um, independently. And that is a huge problem for much more severe problems like uh, dog attacks, dog bites and just a loss of control overall. So restructure your relationship, ensure that your dog sees you as the leader, and then if there is any kind of potential threat, even if it is just the postman, they can alert, they can bark like they're meant to, and then you can come in and take control of the situation. And by taking control of the situation, you need to give your dog something to do after they've alerted you. Now, the single best way to do this is by teaching the place command. If the problem barking is very common with people walking past or coming to the door, simply have a raise bed near the front door once the dog has alerted and barked you send them to their place I'm going to do a video on how to teach place training very soon but you send them to the place where they go into a sit and stay where they remain calm quiet and relaxed until you tell them otherwise so if you are just getting something from the door a postman a parcel the dog will simply stay in the sit and stay and wait and watch you can shut the door off the postman goes no problem if it's you welcoming someone into the home you can greet them at the door you can welcome them in the dog stays in the sit and stay on its place until you tell it otherwise it's a very simple procedure but you can't achieve that level of obedience until your dog sees you as the calm, consistent leader that can take control in those situations.
The next most common form of an irritating, obnoxious barking, and like I say, I'm not gonna kind of go over too much of just common dog barking. Dogs bark, they bark when they play, they bark when they get excited, and like I say, they bark when they alert. Those are all normal behaviors. What we're discussing here is when that behavior becomes really irritating and obsessive and over the top and just too much. So I'm gonna kind of skip over the very low end levels of barking because that is just very common, just normal canine behavior behavior but like I say obnoxious barking for alerting we've just discussed and now we're going to discuss barking for attention now this one is very often alert behavior and it's a behavior that the dog kind of learns that by them barking it gets them what they want. Now this is very common when owners don't really have that kind of conscientious grasp of operant conditioning and the way that dogs learn for a variety of positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, positive punishment and negative punishment. Again that's something that I delve really deeply into in my boot camp course because that boot camp isn't just about the dog it's about also training you to be a calm consistent leader and to be a really calm effective good canine leader you need to grasp those areas of operant conditioning. But what's happening, once you understand those areas, you'll understand how you can so easily inadvertently uh, teach dogs behaviours, especially behaviours that you don't want to see. And this is very common with barking and crying would fit in with this as well. So the dog is being calm, it's being relaxed. And when it's very common that when your dog is being calm and relaxed, you go about the things that you want to do and you often forget about the dog. Then when the dog decides it wants some attention, it wants some fuss, it wants some praise, it might start to come and jump up people, it might start to bark, it might start to cry. Then people remember that the dog's there and then they go, oh, what's up mate, how are you, you okay, what's the matter boo boo, you okay? Oh dear, you're a little bit scared, what's the matter? Praise, attention, fuss. And all you've done is you've taught the dog that to get that praise, to get that attention, to get that fuss, it needs to demonstrate some of those behaviours. You do that over and over or there's certain people in the house that do it and certain people don't your dog will very quickly learn that to get what it wants it either cries or it barks or it jumps up at people and that by being a calm well-mannered relaxed dog that takes itself away and it sits down and lies down it gets nothing so you what you need to do there again is re-establish that relationship with your dog flip it on its head where you are the calm consistent leader and your dog is a well-mannered canine companion and by doing that you reinforce consistently over and over you only offer that praise you only offer that reinforcement you only offer that love or treats or food when the dog is calm quiet and well-mannered when they show that obnoxious barking you hit it instantly with a very firm sharp verbal correction of ah, 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 or no or quiet of the clip we're not hitting the dog we're not punishing them but we're standing up tall we're being a leader we're very much nipping it in the bud every single time the dog goes oh oh i don't get what i want anymore but when i'm sitting i'm quiet and i'm calm i've noticed he's starting to give me what i want and again over time these are the things that i try and preach to people to do from day one because if you do these things from day one none of these problem behaviors tend to occur but it's also quite a simple fix you just have to offer that correction now a very common side effect you'll see is if you offer that correction and it ramps your dog up more makes them more excited it makes them cry louder it makes them bark louder that's a very kind of clear signal that your dog either doesn't see you as the leader in the authority position and it doesn't have to listen to what you're telling it or you have a breakdown in communication and you can't effectively communicate the things that you do want from your dog and the things that you don't want from your dog again that is exactly what my boot camp's for because a lot of the times it's not as simple as coming in and doing this fancy obedience trick or this positivity method of give the reward here and it'll instantly fix the problem unfortunately it's often much more complicated than that and everything always stems from restructuring that relationship and having you as a calm and consistent leader that can then effectively communicate with your dog once you have that then you can implement some of these strategies of reinforcing calm well-mannered behavior and verbally correcting obnoxious loud annoying behaviors once you do that it sounds very easy on paper and it is that easy on paper be a calm consistent leader that can communicate with your canine companions correct annoying irritating behaviors you don't want to see reward the behaviors that you do want to see you do that consistently with everybody in the household within a month i guarantee your problems will all be over so they're kind of the two main things that i have to deal with in terms of obnoxious barking over the top too much alert barking restructure your relationship teach your dog the place command annoying learnt behaviors where the dog is attention seeking 
flip the switch or flip the uh, scenario on the head. Again, restructure that relationship so that you can effectively communicate with your dog. And when you know how to effectively communicate with those areas of operant conditioning, it's really simple. You reinforce the calm, well-mannered, quiet behaviors that we seek and we correct 100% of the time, super consistently, the irritating, obnoxious, loud barking behaviors. Again, you do that over and over again and I guarantee your problems will be solved. I hope that answers your question. I hope that everybody else found that useful. If you are new here, make sure you click that like button and subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you always get alerted of any videos like this. And if you've got any questions or any areas that you're struggling with with your dogs and you want me to kind of delve into it a little bit deeper like I have done in this video, drop them down in the comment section below and I'll have happily scroll through those and I'll answer as many questions as I can. Like I say, I like to really get into the theory, the, um, the kind of practical applications. There's thousands of videos from dozens of different really good balanced dog trainers on YouTube. I think the kind of lacking part of the puzzle is the theory and the understanding and the underpinning. Because if you can understand the theory, then you don't need people like me or other people. And what you don't want to do is just kind of watch a video and then try and carbon copy that without understanding the theory that underpins those values. If you understand the theory, then everything else is easy. So like I say, that's why I do videos like this. I appreciate your patience. They might be a little bit longer and drawn out, but I promise you it's really important for you to become the best canine leader possible.